There are a lot of ways that the SAT can make vocabulary questions hard. Clearly here, it's about the words themselves. And I do think that if you know the definitions of these words, this question isn't that bad. The passage also has some hard words, but I think it's really just about knowing those definitions. So if you don't know them, there's gonna be a point in this where you just need to give up. And that has to happen on the test very quickly because the definitions are not gonna to come to you in the middle of the exam. So when you get to that point where you can't go any further because you don't know the definitions of the words, use your instincts as best you can, go with your gut and move on and get to questions that you have much more control over because there's not much you can do. So let's take a look. I hope to define some of these words for you, but uh, let's see what we can do with the passage. Environmental engineer Florentino de la Cruz has shown that it is misleading to treat municipal solid waste as blank when determining MSW decay rates. Grass in MSW decays at a rate more than 10 times that of corrugated containers, for example, making compositional specification a crucial precondition for de de determining MSW decay rates. So, uh, Basically, the rates are different, right? This this one decays at a rate more than 10 times that of corrugated containers. So um, it is misleading to treat municipal solid waste as the same. Let's try to dumb summary this. When determining the rates, because grass decays at a rate more than 10 times that of con uh, corrugated containers, for example, making compositional specification, meaning like uh, what it's made of and specifying what it's made of, uh, a crucial precondition for determining the rate, meaning in order to determine how how much it's gonna decay, you need to know what it's made of. It's a precondition. It needs to happen before in order for you to know the rate. You gotta know what it's made of. I don't think that matters though. The, the point is we've got a nice dumb summary here. The same is what we're trying to say. So uh, let's see, do any of these words seem like they mean something is the same? Well, how about differ means to be different. So if it's undifferentiated, it's probably undifferent, which means the same. So that's the answer. Uh, I do think that you can decompose that word to make a MSW joke, decompose that word and try to kind of figure out what it means based on the little components. So this is a case where knowing the prefixes and suffixes in English do help you. So yes, undifferentiated means uh, the same throughout. And I'm going to throw another big word at you while we're, we're at it. How about the word uh, homogeneous, homogeneous or homogeneous, depending on how you want to pronounce it. That's another good word to throw into your SAT vocab uh, list. Uh, it's a basically means the same thing. Um, so that's the right answer. And if you knew what that word meant, then you probably got it because you can hopefully de uh, de determine what the other words in the passage are saying and, and get that we're trying to say that, um, yeah, we want to say that these are the same. Basically, these are two contradictory sentences, right? They're saying it's a mistake to think they're the same because here's an example of how they're actually different. So there is a little bit of a, a twisted relationship going on in this sentence as well, on top of the words themselves being difficult. Let's talk about some of the other words though. Inviolable is another one you might be able to take apart and understand. So it in involves the word uh, violate. And to violate is to kind of like, um, you know, harass or, you know, kind of get into and, and, and when you're not supposed to. So inviolable means it cannot be violated, right? So in means again, not. And so basically this is a word that kind of means something like, um, uh, ooh, un, to put it as simply as I can, unconquerable or, um, uh, yeah, you just, it can't be invaded. It can't be gotten into. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can for you guys. Can't be gotten into. Um, so that just has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Innocuous is like, if someone asked me to name, like just an example of an SAT word, innocuous is what I would say. It is the, the just perfect type of SAT word. It is like uncommon enough that most people are not using the word innocuous in their daily conversation, but it is common enough that you will see it in movies, on television, in the news, in the newspaper, in on online. You, you will hear this word everywhere if you just read as like part of your habits. It is a common enough word in 
just like normal academic circles that it, it is common for those people, but most teenagers don't know it. But it, it's going to come up in the SAT a lot. So that's a good word to know. It means it's harmless. means it, it's an innocuous remark. might be something that doesn't have a lot of um, you know punch. It's just kind of a, a quick little aside. Uh, and so it has lots of different uses. But it's a good SAT word to know. Uh, ubiquitous might also be on that list. That is, that is um, everywhere at once. So all places at once. Um, it's kind of everywhere. Uh, another... Good SAT word that comes up on lots of tests is the word pervasive. Pervasive, that can also mean that. So it's a nice little synonym that's also an SAT word. And I do believe that it is good to learn these complicated words in groups. There are lots of words that have um, similar meanings. We might not know any of them, but if we try to learn them in a little group, uh, we might hopefully remember them more easily. If you are interested in doing that, go to satelltutoring.com slash vocab, and there you will find my word lists of things to learn for the SAT. You can quiz yourself. You can uh, see which words you already know. You can learn them in the little groups like I've got, the groups of three, and you can turn the different columns on and off and learn them individually if you need to as well. But they are there for free to help you learn vocab vocab. And uh, it's a great way to build your vocab without a lot of stress. But if you are scoring high already, vocab might be the thing to put you over the, the top and get you close to that 800. But if you're getting a lot of other stuff wrong, like grammar and the, the transition words, that's a higher priority. Learn the grammar rules and the transition words before you start worrying about words like ubiquitous. Uh, the, it's probably just a better use of your time to study the stuff that's definitely going to come up in the test. These words, you might never see them again.